We'd like to welcome you to Parkdale Baptist Church today and trust that you've come looking for a blessing and be in the house of the Lord. If you're visiting with us today, we would love to record your visit with us today. Uh, in the pew, you can uh, find a visitor's card and fill that out. And also, you can sign uh, the visitor's list at the back. So we want you to be welcomed here as we welcome God in this place at this time. Our Father, I thank you, God, for your love. I thank you, God, for who you are and how you, Lord, just take and you just fill our lives with so much. And God, I thank you for the freedom we have in this United States of America that, Lord, we can just serve you in spirit and in truth. And God, I thank you for our fallen men and women that have given their lives that we might have freedom. And Lord, now we pray as we go in this service, God, that you will just anoint us with your power on high, that your word might present, be presented to your people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Would you join with me as we begin praising God in song with Worthy of Worship. as we continue to praise God in song with victory in Jesus. And this is our welcoming song, so we're going to sing one verse, and then I'm going to ask you to step outside of your comfort zone and greet someone you haven't spoken to this morning. I 
Savior came from glory, how he gave his life on Calvary to save a wretch like me. I heard about his groaning, of his precious blood's atoning, then I repented of my sins and won the place, please step out of your comfort zone. Greet someone you haven't spoken to this morning. scripture this morning is from uh, Nehemiah 1, 5 through 11. Then I said, 
Lord, the God of heaven, the great and awesome God, who keeps his covenant of love with those who love him and keeps his commandments. Let your ear be attentive and your eyes open to hear the prayer your servant is praying before you day and night for your servants, the people of Israel. I confess the sins we Israelites, including myself and my father's family, have committed against you. We have acted very wickedly toward you. We have not obeyed the commands, decrees, and laws you gave your servant Moses. Remember the instruction you gave your servant Moses, saying, If you are unfaithful, I will scatter you among the nations. But if you return to me and obey my commandments, then even if your exiled people are at the farthest horizon, I will gather them from there and bring them to the place I have chosen as a dwelling for my name. They are your servants and your people, whom you redeem by your great strength and your mighty hand. Lord, let your ear be attentive to the prayer of this your servant and to the prayer of your servants who delighted in revering your name. Give, give your servant success today by granting him favor in the presence of this man. I was the cupbearer to the king.
Father, we come to you this morning praising your name, Lord. We thank you, Father, for blessing our lives each and every day. We thank you for the opportunity to come here into your house on this, another special day. We're here, Father, to praise you and to give you thanks for everything that you do for us and through us. Lord, we also lift up those who have gone before who have stood up to fight for the freedoms of a country that was formulated around your laws, your decrees, and to serve you. Lord, that is but a little thing. What you have done is the ultimate price, and it's the ultimate gift for us. Help us, Father, to realize that every day when we get up, we have you to thank for seeing the light of another day. And we re also realize that we are called to serve you. We thank you, Lord, for this opportunity. We thank you, Father, for the responsibility also that we do step forward, that we are accountable, and that we do obey you. We thank you, Father, for all that are here. We thank you, Lord, for this offering which we take. We look forward, Lord, to the places where you will send it. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen.
I want God to bring back the glory, don't you? I want to feel God do something in my life like he's never done before. You know, I don't want the old stuff. I want it better than what it was. Y'all are quiet today. Is it getting late? Okay, it may be getting late. You know, folks, listen. You know, and we heard the choir sing through it all. I've learned to depend upon the Lord, haven't you? And I know God wants to make his glory known in the presence of us today, do you? I believe that he wants to. I believe that God wants to do something special in our lives, but in order for him to do so, we must turn in, tune in, and let God bless us. Are you ready? Fasten your seatbelts. Amen. We're going to go on a rough ride for the glory of God. I want you to turn with me to the book of Nehemiah. Now, Nehemiah, after he had wept, he had fasted, now he was beginning to pray. Now, Nehemiah already knew what needed to be done. He knew that he had to go to the king. And he had to get a blessing from the king in order to do what he needed to do. He had to get a blessing from the king to go on into uh, uh, Jerusalem. And the king had to bless him because after all, he was the king's cupbearer. Now what does that mean? That means that any time the king drank anything, it would go to who? Nehemiah, and Nehemiah taste it, and the king would look over at Nehemiah for a little while. If Nehemiah didn't die, if he didn't get sick, then the king would do it. He would drink it. So you don't want to let anybody go like that, right? Somebody that's going to be able to protect your life. So Nehemiah, as he goes, he already has a plan. As he goes in prayer, he already has a plan to the Lord. And he's seeking the Lord out. But he acknowledges first and foremost in his life when he starts his prayer who God is. Do we need to do that today? When we petition God, when we ask God to do something in our lives, do we need to come to the point of really recognizing who God is. I uh, did a song, I serve a risen savior, he's in the world today. Folks, that's the kind of God he is. And you see in this fifth verse, Nehemiah says, I beseech thee, O Lord God of heaven, Okay, first of all, we got to put God in his rightful place. He's the God of heaven. And your aversion today, he, it says uh, that he is the awesome God. The awesome God. Do we serve an awesome God? Do we serve a God that loves us wherever we are? Do we serve a God that loves us the way we are? He's the only one. Amen? (laughs) I mean, you know, nobody loved me like Jesus. You see, when we look at this passage of Scripture and we understand this passage of Scripture, he's saying to God, you're the great God. You're majestic. You're my majesty. You're my faithful. Listen. Listen. The great and terrible God, which is awesome God, that keepeth covenant and mercy for them that love him and observe his commandments. You see, he's talking about who God is. See, God is someone we can trust. You know, God doesn't give us what we what? Deserve. If he gives us what we deserve, we're in trouble, right? 
But God gives us his blessings and he blesses us. And in, in, in fact, Nehemiah is saying, oh, you're everything, God. So he recognizes who God is. Do we need to recognize that? In our church, we want God to hear our prayers, do we not? And folks, when we go to the Lord, we ought to ask of God and tell God how great he is in our lives. If we want God's glory to come back, then we have to realize how good and precious God is. And Nehemiah really knew how precious and dear God was, was, and he knew that he didn't have a chance if he didn't trust God. Do we know that today? Do we know that we don't have a chance unless we trust God and put God in his rightful place? Now, the second thing I see about this scripture is found in the next verse. Notice every time he wanted God to be present. He says, be attentive to what's going on. Be attentive what's in this place. He wanted an audience with God. Have you come to a place in your life where you want an audience with God? God, I, I'm not getting up till you come. God, I'm not going to do anything till you come and show me exactly what you want to do in my life. God, I am not moving until you bless me. Boy, we need some Christians like that, don't we? To say, God, I, I want to be blessed by you. But God, I'm not moving. He said, that I want you to have attentive heart, attentive ears. I want you to listen to me, God. I have something to say. Whew. It's kind of like this. How many of you like to snuggle? I look like a snuggler, don't I? Yeah. I like to snuggle right up to God, don't you? I like to get real close to him. And I say, God, I just want to be in your presence. I just want to snuggle around you, God, and I want you to give me a peace that passes all understanding, and I want to enjoy the presence of God, and I want you to come. You know what I told God today before I came? I said, God, if you're not coming with me, I'm not going. <laughs> See, I can't get up here and preach. I can't do anything without the presence of God in my life and in my heart. Until God speaks to me, and many times it's getting sermons. I say, God, I'm not moving till you give me that sermon. We're there for a while sometimes because I'm a little dense. But you see, Nehemiah wanted to get close to God and he wanted an audience with God and he didn't want any interference. He just wanted to be with God and let God fill him with his power. That is what I want for this church. That's what I want to do. I want to bring back the glory. I won't, I'm not going to bring it. I want God to bring it. I want God to bring it back to glory and touch this church spiritually as it's never been touched before. I want an audience with God. And I want to know him a lot more. There's an amen goes here. Okay, when I stop, that's your cue, all right? We might need to work that out. You see... Folks, listen, he wanted to be with the Lord. How many, you, you see, I'm ready to be with the Lord and go to heaven. Aren't you? How many of you ready? But not today. <laughs> I'm ready to be with the Lord, but folks, listen to me. A lot of people say, well, heaven starts when we get to heaven. Heaven started now, amen? And I'm in the presence of God right now in this place at this time. Do you believe that? Man, I'm enjoying God right now. If it gets any better, I'm going to shout. Man, when, when Ted sang that song, he's my favorite singer now. 
Amen? When he, he sang that song, man, I just wanted to shout. If he, I, I, it was all I could do is contain myself. Because I want that, don't you? I want God to be glorified in my life. In my life. They may see my good works and glorify my Father, which is in heaven. I want to get myself out of the way and let God be present. Whew. That gets, that's good, isn't it? Then he said, you know what? This is the part I don't like about the prayer. I mean, it's good prayer and all, you know. But the thing I don't, when we have to confess our sins. How many of you like to confess your sins? Okay, there's no liars in here. We don't like to confess our sins. I don't. Uh, we always do it like this. And Father, forgive us of our sins. Y'all did that today, right? Always. It's in our every prayer. And God, forgive us of our sins. Do we really mean that? Folks, listen, I think that we ought to say, God, forgive us our sin and take the want of that sin away. I was talking to some people this week and that's what I told them. I said, not only do we need to pray that God forgive us of sin, but to take our sin away, the desire for that sin away. Will God do that? Yeah, but we got to get serious about wanting the sin away. <laughs> and... Nehemiah, in these few verses, he said, Lord, I've sinned. You know, he said, Israel sinned, the people of Israel, and then he made it a pronoun, we have sinned. Do you hear that? We've got to include ourselves. We are sinners. And he says, you know, Lord, we've sinned and we, we've done things against you and we have dealt with you. Terribly. Now, God, we understand that, but God, you said you could scatter us. If we, you told Moses that if we didn't follow you, you would scatter us all over. But if we had turned back to you, you'd bring us all back together. Isn't that what it says in the scripture you read, you read today? He says, We've sinned. We've sinned, we've come short of your glory and we've sinned against you and we've dealt with you terribly. But God, remember your promise. You promised Moses, you promised you'd come back to us and you'd help us realize our sin. And if we'd turn away from that sin, you'd bring us back together. How many of you believe that? How many of you believe that? I believe that with all my heart, with all my soul. God wants to do a work together with us and he wants to bring us all back together to do it. Yes. That's what God wants to do. And he wants us to be of one mind, of one faith. United. United, we stand, divided, we... Fall. I think that was Patrick Henry that said that. Folks, listen, we've got to unite together to bring back the glory. If we want a blessing from God, God we've got to do that blessing together. We've got to be in one accord. Together. But we've got to realize we're sinners. Have y'all ever sinned? That makes you a sinner. Amen? And we need to come back to God and say, God, we've dealt terrible against you. God, forgive us of our sins. Because God, we want this church to be together. How many of you want great things to happen in this church? Raise your hand. Can't hardly wait, right? Now, I saw some don't raise their hand. Are y'all members yet? Well, you better join where you can raise your hand, amen? Amen. Folks, listen, we as a church can go forward when we mean business with God and we want God to be a part of it. I told my Sunday school class this morning, 
as we were teaching uh, in the book of Luke, the 24th chapter, it was Easter again this morning in our Bible study. And you know, I told my, uh, my class this morning, I said, guys, listen to me. Jesus rose from the grave that we might have life. If he hadn't arisen from the grave, if there was no resurrection, there would be no resurrections of the saints. Amen? And because he resurrected, we shall also live and be blessed by God and God's uniting his kingdom. You believe that? Well, look at this. Look at this passage of scripture. I really hadn't read my notes today. Uh, but I'll show you, I got some in a little while. In verse 10, I want you to look at it with me. He says, Lord, you, you said, you promised that you would, uh, uh, you would uh, bring us back together when we turn from our sin. He says, now, verse 10. Now these are thy servants and thy people whom thou hast redeemed by thy great power and by thy strong hand. He is asking for intervention for the people of Israel right then. He said, Lord, let your heart be attentive. These are those people that needs a touch from the master. And folks, these are those people, right? Parkdale Baptist Church is those people that have been redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ. And because we've been redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ, all we have to do is come to him boldly and he'll glorify himself through us. I believe that, don't you? I'm excited about that. And then again in the 11th verse, he says, oh Lord, I beseech you. I desire to hear from you. He said that three times in this passage of scripture. He says, Lord, I beseech thee. Let now thy ear be attentive to the prayer of thy servant and to the prayer of of thy servant in this place who desires to fear the name and prosper, I pray thee. Now watch what he says last. Thy servant this day and grant him mercy in the sight of this man, the king. Right? He said, Lord, I want you to give me favor to this man, the king that's in this place that I might do your will. Do you hear that? See, I want to tell you something. In order for this church to go forward, we have to trust God to take care of of the people that are not even Christians. Do you hear that? That's my sermon next week, so I won't get too much into that. But we need to pray for the people that are fighting against us. Oh, that's, we don't need to fight with them with physical or words. We need to just pray to God. And that's exactly what Nehemiah was saying. You take care of the king. You take care of the king and I'll do the rest, God. But you, there's an interference here and that's the king and he's keeping it from happening. You take care of him. And I'll do what you want me to do. Are you ready for God to take care of the interference? The devil does not want this to church to survive. Do you believe that? If you don't, listen to some people sometime. Man, the devil is at work. 
But guess what? God's at work. And he says, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Amen? So Satan's not going to win, is he? I've read the last book. He's not winning. Amen? He can, you know what? And I, I got to share this with you before I close. And I know this is chasing a rabbit, but I know when I'm chasing rabbits, at least I know. Okay? But listen, Satan can oppress us. But Satan, if you're a child of God, can never possess you. Do y'all hear that? Now, Satan's been doing a lot of oppression over here. And we got to say, okay, Satan, you're not going to oppress us anymore. Because God is in our life and he possesses us. And I am filled with the Holy Spirit. You know, I don't ask the Holy Spirit to come this morning. He's already here. And he's already filling me up and he's already filled you up and all we have to do, we don't need any more of the Holy Spirit. We need the Holy Spirit to get a little more of us. Everybody's wanting more of the Holy Spirit. That's all it is. He's not gonna get any more. You've already been saved. What else you want? The Holy Spirit is coming abode in your heart and your life. Now it's time to what? To let the Holy Spirit get a little more of you. Amen? Hey, listen, to rebuild, we must come to prayer. Do you believe that? And we need to recognize who God is. Oh, that'll never work in this church. Yeah, it won't if we have that attitude. Now, y'all quit saying amen. I'm a little scared now. Folks, it'll work if, if it's God-led, not the agenda of some pastor or some person. But if it's God-led, it'll work. Amen? And I'm tired of being led by men. I want to be led by God. Our Father... I thank you for your word and how your word has pierced our hearts and our lives. And Lord, we desperately want to rebuild Parkdale Baptist Church. We as people. And if we want that, God, we know you want it a lot more than us. We know that you de desire it a lot more than us. And Lord, so I pray, God, that you will just, at this time, deal with our heart. Deal with our heart, Lord, that we might know you more. And recognize who you are. And Lord, that we might not just... Uh, believe in you but God that we'll accept you totally in our lives and trust you with our whole heart with our whole soul and with whole might and Lord I pray for this time of invitation God that you'll speak to your people for your glory for your honor in Jesus name we pray Amen. As we stand together, we're going to sing a hymn of invitation. God is speaking to your heart and your life. You need to come. It's time to do business. Maybe you're here and you've never invited Jesus in your heart and your life. It's time to accept him as the Lord and Savior this very day. If not today, when? This may be the only opportunity you have to invite Jesus in your heart and your life. Maybe you're here as a Christian. And God stirred you this morning. And you need to rededicate that life. 
You need to do in your life what God wants you to do. It's time to do business with God. Maybe you're here and you need to join this congregation. It's time to bring back the glory in this church. God wants you to do something. Speak to my heart, Lord Jesus. Step out of your seat and do what God had had you do right now. Speak to my heart. Speak into your heart. Speak to my heart. Speak to my heart. excited aren't you Amen. you excited what God's going to do in this church well maybe I'll ask that again you excited about what God's going to do in this church Amen. I am too uh, there are a few announcements that I want to call your attention to uh, a special business meeting is called for June the 3rd 2012 in the sanctuary at 12 o'clock I have to finish at 12 no, I'm just kidding. On time. Immediately following the worship service. The purpose of this me meeting is to approve a three-year contract at $6,250 per year for auditing the church finances to approve raising our budget from uh, uh, the audit of 4500 to 6250 Okay, so we'll have, have a spe that's the agenda. Uh, for the special business meeting, okay? Uh, it has to be announced one week in advance, so we're doing that today, amen? amen. There's gonna be a reception. We get uh, cake before lunch. I like that, sweets before lunch. You know, I resemble that. Uh, and so we're gonna have that uh, this morning, uh, or this afternoon, or right after church in the foyer, uh, congratulate these graduates. Uh, they put a lot of work into it and uh, they're going on with their life. You congratulate. There's nothing like education and filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen? Nothing like it. God will bless that every single time. All right. Let's bow in prayer and be dismissed. Lord, as we go to our homes today, God, I pray that you might bless us. And God, I want you to just set our hearts afire that we may do in our lives what you want us to do. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Join hands and we're gonna sing the family, family of God. I'm so glad.